Okay, YouTubers and space detectives, today we're going to be looking at this object on Mars. Now, I published this originally four years ago, and I've come back to this because what I've done, uh, this is the original video I did, and it's called Giant UFO Impacts on Mars, Meteors or Spaceships. And this object was actually sent in to me by two people. Uh, one was William Benton and the other was Chad Myers. And uh, there's also a giant meteor impact in this video as well. One of them's a giant meteor, but this thing isn't. It doesn't look like any meteor you ever see anywhere. It's perfectly round, it's very reflective, and it's quite large. It's 420 feet across in diameter from here to here. I've got it on Google Earth here as well for you. And uh, you can measure it on here using the little ruler. Let's do it in feet. Okay, let's get the little ruler. Do it from there, straight across. 420, yeah, yeah, 417. It depends how you measure it. It's about 420 if you go from there to there, uh, roughly. It really depends on how accurately you, you measure it. So that's how big it is. And um, if you can't be bothered to put the coordinates in, which will be in the description, by the way, there'll be coordinates for this. If you can't be bothered to put those in, all you have to do is type in the name of this crater or depression that's nearby on, on the Google Mars, okay? Google Earth straight Mars. It's called Udza, spelt U-D-Z-H-A. So if you type that in and then just press search, that will come up. And all we do is look to the right and down a bit from there, to the east. And we have this rectangular image here, which is a Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter image. And zoom in right in the middle and there it is and you can actually see where this thing has come in and impacted at a, a very slight angle and slid along the ground and ended up here now nasa call this a crater and um i don't believe it's a crater it doesn't look like any crater i've ever seen anywhere on any planet and i've looked at many believe me i've looked at probably over ten thousand craters maybe more um, large craters like this, not just the little ones. And uh, this is nothing like any I've ever seen. And this is why it, this, this was so interesting, because not only is it very round, it's highly reflective. Now the actual impact scar here is really long, it goes right across here. And it starts, I would say, around here, where we have the colour part of the image. And, then, and this thing just kind of went along the ground and slid until it ended up here. So this came in at a very sort of fine angle and then sort of glanced onto the surface and skidded along. So this is probably quite smooth underneath, I would imagine, and has a slight curve. If you look here, you can see there's a curve to the actual impact area here. And then it's, it's kind of slid along. So it, it, it's insane. Let's, let's get rid of that because it's using up a lot of memory on here. Now what it did, I wanted to look at this properly because in that original video from four years ago, I only used clips from Google Earth. Now they're not too bad on Google Earth, straight Mars. Um, but what I've done here is I've got all the actual satellite images of this thing and I've got them all up here on my Gigapan site for you to compare back to back. There's a black and white one there, it's actually red. Red filter, infrared blue, Sup supposedly colour, but obviously that has a yellow filter. This is uh, merged infrared blue, which is very blue, so it's more of a blue filter on this one. And this one is colour, uh, which is actually the same as this one here. In, in, color wise so when they call things color or whatever on on the nasa pages they're not always true color <laughs> because they use all these different filters for nefarious reasons usually 
they, they explain it away as, oh, we, we need to gather infrared data and all this kind of thing. But really what it does, a lot of this um, jiggery-pokery, is it actually puts you off and throws you off the scent because they often make things completely the opposite colour of what they really are. And we never see much green on Mars. And, and a lot of these filters will just filter all the green out. And uh, there's, a lot of there's a lot of greenery on the surface, as I've shown before. There are plants, there are vines, there are giant f things that look like giant fruit or vegetables. Uh, check those out. I'll put clips in at the end and I'll link to them for you to check out. But basically you can compare all these geopans together and uh, I've got them all centred. And you can get some really good detail on this thing. It's, it's quite reflective. But the, the one on Google Earth is much brighter and uh, has obviously been brightened up. So what I've got here, I've got a slightly brightened up version of it. And let's look at it really closely. It's a perfect circle. And you can see that the, the ground has kind of risen up here as it's pushed into the ground, but kind of skidded along. And we've got this ridge around the front end where it's gone in, where the material on the ground has been pushed up. Okay, so this has come in and skidded along the ground. It does a bit look like initially that the, the, this may have been surrounded by water and this, this may be water erosion causing this uh, on the ground here but I don't think so uh, because when you look at it as a whole image the best one is this uh, one of these here you can really see in this one you can really see that impact skid mark coming right back from here and then going right in and skidding along the ground now, meteors don't tend to do that, and meteors do not tend to be perfectly round and this reflective, and are usually full of holes and divots and, and little craters on them where they, and they're usually, they are often metallic and quite shiny like this is, but they're never this perfect. This is way too good to be a normal meteor. So, what is it? NASA call this a crater. Let's have a look at the NASA page. If you go to the top here, top right, and click on the Arizona link there, NASA Arizona link, it will take you to the original download page from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter or High Rise camera. Okay, and this is it here. And there's lots of different versions of this, and not all of them are that big. You can download these; they're not huge. And uh, this is the unfiltered colour, so maybe that's the real colour. Maybe it is blue and not this orangey yellow colour like we see. So it's got all the information here, but I think they just call it a crater. Yeah, 125 metre diameter north powder layer deposits crater. Right. Uh, but no explanation, just a title. Um, that's it, that's all you get. You get the phase angle and all the other information here. You also get a location here, which you can zoom in on here. You can zoom in on this and uh, check it out as well. So you've got like a little map there. So it gives you a location. So what is this thing? It, it's not a meteor. It clearly is not a meteor and it has this strange part to it here. And you can see that in really good detail here. This, it's got dust over it and, and ice by the looks of it. It's frozen. And you can really zoom in on these because I've enlarged these so you can go right in close. It's got this strange part on the side of it here which kind of looks really strange. In this one, you can really see it clearly. And it's got this kind of yellowy-orange dust over it like everything has on Mars. But it's also frozen. This looks like frost and ice around it here. Very strange indeed. So the giant disc, I mean, like I said, this was spotted four years ago. And I'm still perplexed by it. Because it, it just doesn't look like a normal meteor or impact crater at all. Absolutely not. I will link to the original video here as well. And you can check it out because I go into a lot of detail about it and, and a lot more detail on, on Google Earth as well. So you may want to check out this original video as well. So I'll put links to that below and at the end of the video there'll be a, a hyperlink thing to it as well. 
So there we are. I mean, credit, obviously, credit to William Benson and Chad Myers for sending these things in um, all those years ago. Uh, this is crazy, this scene. And um, I've done a little sort of compilation of, of clips of it here uh, on this video, zooming in and out and stuff. And you can really see some interesting detail on this and it's highly reflective and very metallic looking. But meteors are often metallic, but this one is way too perfect, I think, to be a, a normal meteor and may actually be a ship. And there was another one in this video as well. This, this thing probably is a meteor, the blue one, uh, because it's in a regular shape and it's got holes in it and stuff. So it, the point is, it's too perfect and there's not enough divots and holes in this thing for it to be a meteor. It's just too good. So there we have it. What is this thing? Is it a spaceship? Is it a kind of UFO kind of disc, giant disc that's crashed into the planet? Could it be a massive drone that was sent there to terraform the surface that was full of genetic material and spores for fungi and things like that? Is someone actually, or some civilization other than us, terraforming Mars? And that's why we see these giant, huge giant plants like the, the Joe fruit that I showed recently. Is that what's happening here? I don't know. Pure speculation. So check out all these pans, and they'll be in the description below. And uh, I'll link to the original video, which you may want to watch, because it goes into a lot more detail about this. And there's another one here as well, which is um, this one, which it shows you as well, which is this kind of meteor, which is way bigger. This is like over a mile across, um, this thing. And uh, this looks more like an actual meteor impact because you can see the burn mark here as it's come in and uh, scorched the ground. This is insane. So check these out. Give us a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, the yellow, yellowy one here, which is supposedly colour, doesn't look very good. It looks, it's too kind of washed out and too bright. But you can see some interesting details in here on all of these. And... Uh, the closest to the actual colour of it is probably this kind of bluey colour, from what I can gather. But who knows, maybe it is this kind of um, orangey, kind of yellowy kind of colour. That matches up most of the other stuff we see on Mars anyway. So there we are. Check out the main link to my Gigapan page as well, because um, there's loads of new stuff to check out. And uh, there's loads of... I've been very busy, even though I've been ill for a few weeks. I'm just about better now. My voice is still not quite right. I lost my voice and I've had a really bad ear infection, so I couldn't do videos, which is why I've uploaded a few repeated videos from before. So I've been quite ill and bedridden and uh, I'm just sort of recovered, but my voice still isn't back to normal, as you can hear. Uh, but come and check out the main link to my Gigapan page, which is in the description near the top. And you can check out all these things from the James Webb Telescope. There's Mars surface stuff. There was this weird thing on Mars that I, I showed on the Mars magazine a week or two ago. It's what I've called the hand. <laughs> Look at this. Check this out. With the th what looks like a thumb and fingers. It probably isn't a hand. It's probably some kind of weird sedimentary rock that's kind of broken and fragmented and eroded. But it's very strange. We've got this weird part sticking out here and what they're like, fingers and stuff. And uh, have I marked it on here? I should have, I don't think I have. Oh, here we are, that's where it is. That's what it looks like without any loads, without loads of contrast added, that's what it looks like. But uh, very interesting. And there's loads of other weird things I'll quickly show you really quickly before we go. Um, this one. Now, this, this is a, a very recent one I did. This is uh, Sol 3582. And uh, we've got loads of strange shards in here. Now, a lot of, of course, a lot of this is natural, right? We've got lots of wind erosion and layers that are being eroded by the wind and sculpted by the wind with these spiky parts sticking out. Now, I don't think all of this is rock. I think a lot of this is concrete, as I've said before. And I think, as we've seen before, and as I've shown before, a lot of these are metal objects that have corroded. And we have over here, 
we have this weird thing here, which is very strange. Just here, with this kind of uh, part sticking out. Now, could this be some kind of um, part of a structure? Perhaps. I don't know. Uh, I've got a clip of that down here. I've got clips of all these things in here, just below, which I've colorized. There it is. Could it be a cross beam? You've got a shadow here and there's a beam sticking out. That's a sort of slight angle there. Very strange. We've got this thing here sticking out, which is really odd. I think a lot of this is twisted metal, as I've said before. And uh, I think a lot of this was concrete and with metal rebar coming through it. And the concrete erodes are away, leaving the rebar behind. There's a clip of the spiky ones there, which are really cool. And there's some weird little things on the ground as well, sticking up. And then there was this. This is really weird. But actually, before I show you that, there's another nice shard here. This is really odd. This looks like twisted metal here, just here. This is the interesting one, I think. And I've called this the levitation illusion because this is actually in the sand, this rock here, but it appears to be hovering because if you look at the angle of the, of the sun from the shadows here, it's kind of not far off midday, right? It's not far off midday, I would say, because otherwise these here, these shadows would be much longer. I would say it's about one, in, one or two o'clock in the afternoon and the shadows are, are not very long because they come almost perfectly below this here. So it may be sort of 12, 30, one o'clock in the afternoon, something like that, maybe two. So that the shadows are almost directly below these things. In other words, they're not stretched out. So we're looking near midday, around one o'clock-ish. So what's happened here with this one, if it would move, right, is it's cancelled out its own shadow because it's facing directly upwards and the shadow is here. There's only a very slight shadow here and it's cancelled it out because it's actually facing the sun and there's hardly any shadow at all. Whereas if this was taken an hour later, there would be a shadow coming across this way slightly and it's on the slope here with a, a ridge of sand there, with like a little dune. But it looks like it's hovering. Let me show you it in context. It's over here, the hovering rock. There it is in context. It's not very big. It's probably only about a foot or less, maybe six inches. There it is. Let me zoom out a little bit. Show you it in context there. It's an optical trick. I don't think it's hovering. I'm just calling it a levitation illusion because that's what it is because certain things when they're at the perfect angle will appear to levitate okay because they're the shadow is almost cancelled out by the angle of the object facing the sun right so it, it's just crazy and uh, that's what I think it is anyway I mean I could be wrong <laughs> So there we are. So I don't want to go on much longer. There, there are a few other things I want to show you, but I'll do that in the next video. Um, I've been do, I've, even though I've been ill for a few weeks, I've done a lot of work, as I always do. I never stop working. Um, and uh, even, even when I was sat here sweating like, like Prince Andrew's lawyer, I was still working <laughs> with a fever and everything. So uh, there we are. So check out the main page on, uh, on here. And... Uh, there's loads of stuff to see and uh, it's crazy some of the stuff I found recently and um, th th there's just uh, too much to show you in one video so I'll come back to some of these in a few days and show you some of the other things I've found there's some crazy images there and uh, check out if you haven't checked it out already check out the James Webb telescope uh, video I did uh, about a week ago stunning images absolutely stunning and they're, they're really, really amazing in detail. You can just keep zooming right in, okay? You can zoom right in on these and you don't lose definition. They're, they really are quite stunning. Really good detail and amazing color, okay? So check all the links out. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for sticking with me through this period where I've been ill, but I'm better, 
pretty much back to normal now, so all's good. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.